Hi, everyone. My name is Chris from National Parents Organization, and today I'm here with John from Michigan. And, you know, a lot of times on here we talk to researchers and, and uh, we talk to uh, different advocates. John's a uh, shared parenting advocate out of Michigan, and uh, I wanna, wanted to bring him on today to talk a little bit about his experience, uh, you know, where he had 60-40 with his kids, and then uh, when, when the mom decided to move away, he became the custodial parent. So, uh, John, thanks so much for coming on today. Hey, thanks for having me, Chris. And so, John, you've had, uh, you know, we, we recently featured one of your posts here on the National Parents Organization uh, social media accounts, and uh, you've had uh, quite the uh, ordeal recently. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? December 2008, I knew my marriage was uh, going downhill. And then in uh, May of 2009, I discovered a handwritten note from her saying that if I moved the children to Michigan, could he force me back to Michigan to fight for parenting time? So after talking with my uh, parents, I didn't have any money. Um, they lent me 1500 bucks for a retainer for my attorney. Um, and the advice my stepdad gave me was, find an attorney you cannot afford. And so I talked to a couple of judge friends of mine that both recommended the same attorney. So I hired her. And then uh, we went through the process, <clears throat> mediation, you know, all that stuff, you know, so the attorney could get their billable hours. Um, I ended up with a six to 40 split. And actually, back in 2009, I thought that was pretty damn good. Had I known now what I knew then, no, I would have never settled for that. I would have took it to trial. But, you know, when an attorney back then says, hey, that's the best you're going to get, I took it. <clears throat> so a year and a half later, my ex-wife decides that she wants to move to Pennsylvania. Hit the kids with her. She filed a motion. I objected. And uh, my children won. The judge says, you, Ms. Nichols, you can feel free to move to Pennsylvania, but the children will stay here in the state of Michigan. Now, during the whole uh, process, I was labeled as an abuser. So when the judge told my ex that she could move to Pennsylvania, that the kids would stay here, why the heck would she leave her children with an abuser? I wasn't an abuser. She left it with me. She left. <laughs> Uh, she filed three motions later for a change of domicile after that uh, decision was made. Judge denied all three of them. And ended up the judge got tired of hearing her story, but and awarded me attorney fees. My kids are grown now, um, 26 and 22, doing real good for themselves, striving. My daughter's a medical profession, my son's in the trades. Very proud of both of them, considering the life today. Uh, they had when uh, mom and dad were going through divorce. Yeah, I just want to clarify, this all happened way back in 2009, right? That is correct. And just to make a note, you know, I did found uh, Michigan for Shared Parenting here about four years ago. When I did that, you know, my kids were grown. What do I have to lose? I'm fighting for dads and moms like you guys. You know, this is not a father's right thing. This is not a mother's right thing. This is a children's rights thing. And um, and yes, even though I'm years out of the system and I was a custodial parent for many years, um, I, you know, I'm fighting for you guys. You guys, moms and dads alike. Well, you certainly are doing good work. And uh, yeah, I think this is a good story just to remind people that, you know, you do have to, and it's unfortunate that you have to fight for these things because they should just be automatic, right? But um, you know, you obviously fought really hard and, and you were actually, actually made some headway in the system. And, and that was all the way back in 2009. I think, you know, nowadays we've made a lot of noise about shared parenting. A lot more people are aware of it. Um, and it's not necessarily easier, but it is certainly, I think, more socially accepted now. Um, you know, is that wh what do you tell parents when uh, when you hear about somebody that's newly going through divorce and and may maybe doesn't have any hope at all? Well, for number one. Keep a garbage off social media, number one. Um, research your judge. Um, I can only speak for Wayne County, Michigan. And I have found that 
the younger female judges that's on the bench right now seem to be more fair. Does that mean I agree with every decision that they make? Of course not. But they seem to be more fair towards all the litigants. They show compassion, they show respect. And um, families matter too, and Michigan for sure parenting both fought to get a newly elected judge elected to the bench. And we succeeded. Uh, he deals with mostly Title IV E cases in the uh, front of the court. And he just don't understand, you know, why, you know, Title IV E and IV D, you know, really pushes things that, that the way that they do. But getting back to the original question, um, <clears throat> you know, find you a good attorney. Um, look at the campaign finance uh, reports to the judge that you uh, have assigned to. Um, I I kind of hate to admit this, but the attorney that I had uh, was a contributor to my judge. Had I, had I known that at the time, I did not know that at the time. Same as the guardian at litem. Um, it's not a matter of what you know, it's a matter of who you know. And these attorneys, uh, they hang out with these judges after hours. I've seen it at a political function here, uh, election night. Uh, three judges was at, uh, another uh, candidate's event. Um, but the bottom line is that, you know, like I said, with the social media, keep a garbage all social media. Um, don't disparage your parent. Lift your parrot up in front of your kids, no matter how much you, you want you want to lie and hate it. But lift lift the other parent up. You know, that is your children's uh, parent. And I'm saying this to moms and dads both. Yeah, I think it's uh it's really critical that, you know, you have um you, you have to strategically uh, you know go about this. You just can't really pick any attorney. Um, you know, usually you, you can't pick your judge. Typically those are assigned to you. Right. But you can at least know an, a little bit about them. And there's a lot of public information out there about these judges that, you know, is out there. It's free. And all you have to do is go looking for it really. Uh, and so I, th I think that's a good tip for parents is to, uh, you know, know your attorney, um, know really what they stand for and, and what they fight for. And I, I always tell people too, that attorneys, uh, typically specialize in things. I mean, there's some attorneys that exclusively work with one gender or the other, right? So if you, if that attorney doesn't typically work with somebody of your gender, you, you may not, may, may not want to pick them, you know? Um, but yeah, do your research and, uh, really control. I always tell people too, to control the things that you can control, and, uh, and, and you can't really worry about the things you can't control because uh, there's a lot that you can't control when you go into a uh, family court. Oh, for sure. For sure. You know, I guess my advice to, you know, these parents out there, you know, don't give up. Keep a level head. Don't disparage the other parent. Keep it all social media. And just do the best you can do to be active in your children's lives because even when they get to adults, Hey, Dad, I remember when this happened. I remember when that happened. You were there when this happened. I'm very blessed that I had two children that turned out the way that they did with the baggage they, they come along with after our divorce. I want to bring up the uh, the image of the, the post that you had here. I'm going to put it up on screen and uh, so everybody can see it and just talk a little bit about it again. But, you know, just to give everybody some context, you know, this is an ordeal that you went back, you know, through in 2009. So this is, you know, long before uh, a lot of people were talking about shared parenting. I just want to really emphasize the advice that everybody had, to, you know, just to really keep at it and, uh, and don't give up hope. And I, I think that's really the big message here for people. Back in, I believe it's 2011, um, when she moved, I got a court order, a court ruling late December, right before Christmas, that uh, the judge ruled in favor of my children. If you notice, I didn't say they ruled in my favor. They ruled in favor of my children. And all of a sudden, and I just moved. A friend of mine had, was generous enough to lend me a, let me stay in his two-bedroom mother-in-law quarters on his back of his property it's a small place um my daughter had her own room my son and i we slept in bunk beds i was completely broke by the cartel 
um, you know, the cartel just broke me. So I was blessed enough to have a friend that was able to do that for me. And then all of a sudden, like two days later, a ruling come that I was a custodial parent. What am I going to do now? You know, before I was able to just drop off my kids to the ex-wife cells to get ready for school. But now the ex-wife is gone. I'm up here in Michigan, new family. I had a few friends. And I was able, in a fortunate boss. I was able to change my work schedule by a half an hour every day so I could get my kids to school. I dropped my son off at a friend's house so he could ride the bus with her boys to school. And I dropped my daughter off at the high school. She would practice uh, um, piano in a choir room after school. I would pick her up, swing by, pick up my son, and I'd come home. And so I guess my point is when these guys say, hey, um, I have no family in the area. I didn't either. But I made it work. You know, I've leaned you know, towards some friends. Um, and I was very uh, blessed and very grateful, you know, to have the opportunity to have people, you know, that supported me like that. So that's what I guess it kind of irritates me when a dad will move two to three counties over and expect 50-50. How can you make that work? You know, when I first divorced my former wife, I was a half mile away in the same school district. The kids go walk to either house after school. And that's how we made it work. Um, like I said, sorry for rambling, but uh, you get me on a subject, talk about this, I could go on all night long. But <laughs> no, I think it's great. I mean, it, it is worth, you know, it is um, worth pointing out that, you know, if you do want to do shared parenting, that there are probably some things that are not practical, right? And, and distance you know, having, you know, a couple of counties over is, is going to make that very difficult. So if you do want to have shared parenting, you need to make, you know, all the things that you can sort of optimum for, you know, for that shared parenting. So, you know, it's, it's uh, important that, you know, parents be real, realistic too. And we're going through these that they have, you know, a situation that is, you know, sustainable and, and, you know, and basically uh, in a position to put them to be able to do shared parenting. Um, so you founded uh, Michigan uh, for Shared Parenting. Let's talk a little bit about that. How did that get started, and and uh, what was the genesis of that, and and uh, what's the state like in Michigan right now? Oh, sure. Um, I'm glad you asked me that, Chris. Um, back in I believe 2019, we had House Board House Bill 4691 sponsored by Representative Jim Runstead to basically uh, create a 50-50 as a starting point in the discussion after a divorce. That bill failed. Um, Senator, he's now a senator, but at the time, Representative Runstead was the uh, chairperson of the House Judiciary Committee. The past Senator the committee, it went to the full House for a vote and uh the speaker at the time um tom leonard but not let it up to be a full house vote so that bill died and i would like to give a, a shout out to mpo uh, michigan representative at the time uh Linda wright for all her efforts that she did in michigan at that particular point in time so after that i found it uh Michigan for shared parenting. And after I founded that, we continue to do the same thing. We have, you know, went to the Capitol many, many times. I've attended uh, American Equal Shared Parenting Conferences around the country on more than one occasion. CPAC down in uh, Orlando, Florida. I'm going to CPAC again here in uh, March of 2023. So back in the fall of 2021, we were able to secure 
two sponsors on a shared parenting bill. One was Representative Alex Garza, who's a Democrat. The other is uh, Representative Scott Van Singel, who is a Republican. They co-sponsored two bills doing what we wanted to do. And um, and a team that we had put together um, that helped make this happen, our attorney, uh, Jennifer Payne, um, our members are Brian Hendricks, uh, Carl Dirsch, uh, Annie Rogers, Kevin Castle, Jermaine Wyrick. Um, we were able to get the uh, House Bill 5459 and 5460 uh, submitted and submitted to the uh, Families, Children's, and Seniors Committee. Committee, I'm sorry. <clears throat> and unfortunately, over a year later, it is sitting on chairperson Rodney Wakeman's desk. And he refuses to hold a vote on those two bills. Uh, Representative Rodney Wakeman is a term limited representative. So what does he have to lose by holding a vote right now in lame duck? Um, people has reached out to him. He's pretty much denied him. But doing a little more research on campaign finance, our opposition has donated to his campaign. That's why we don't have a hearing right now. And uh, yes, we have called him out on that respectively, respectfully. But uh, our bill here, Michigan, right now is dead in the water. And next year, and I hate to throw the politics into this. We have a Democratic governor, Democratic House, Democratic Senate. Nothing to happen at least for the next two years. And, and, I, and I'm sorry to my followers here in Michigan, but, you know, we tried. Yeah, it's certainly uh, timing is important and, and having all the right players. And it's unfortunate that sometimes when you follow the money on these things, there's an obvious answer as to why, you know, something isn't moving. And that certainly seems to be the case uh, here in Michigan. Um, you know, what what sort of, uh, you know, what what do the people in Michigan think about this? And have you talked to, uh, you know, a lot of people, what, what do the voters think about these two bills? Well, you know, the general voter, unless they've been to a divorce or separation, they know that's from that family court. So they think the system's fine. And of course, uh, and unfortunately, our followers, they like to get behind a keyboard and complain. But when it comes to boots on the ground, sometimes we, you know, we lack some effort, you know, in that aspect. And I mentioned, you know, previously about, you know, all the trips to the Capitol and these national conferences that I attend and even going to the U.S. Capitol. I'm in a position now where a lot of dads are not in a position financially. You know to do this and i've you know have been very gracious in the past about having uh generous people you know donate to help get me to these events well that's great and so that just oh go ahead i was gonna say you know it does take money you know to lobby um you know like ned holstein the Former uh, chair of uh, NPO, you know, told me when he met with us in Lansing on uh, Super Bowl Sunday several years ago, you know, nothing's for free. Yeah, it certainly takes a lot of money to, uh, you know, do all the traveling and get all the people together and, and really uh, reach out. So if somebody's in Michigan and they want to help out with this, is there something that they can do? Can they reach out to you? Do you guys have uh, some social media accounts that they can uh, log on to and contact yeah. you? <clears throat> yes, we do. We have uh, a Facebook page, uh, Michigan for Shared Parenting. Or you can uh, look me up personally, John C. Nichols. And our website is, and if you put me on the spot, I believe it is Michigan for Shared Parenting dot org, O R G. We'll go ahead and put links to all those sites and uh, social media accounts in the notes here uh, for the video. So if you're interested in getting a hold of John, uh, just check the notes of the video and you'll have uh, a link there. 
Uh, John, is there anything we, we didn't talk about that you wanted to talk about today? Um, just the only thing I can say, you know, in closing is, uh, you know, when I speak to dads, I don't mean literally just dads, you know, I mean both parents too, but, you know, it just affects dads more than anything. But I will tell you, after uh, consulting with my, our group attorney, Jennifer Payne, this morning, <clears throat> um, I had 134 overnights a month when I went through my uh, divorce. Guess what the magic number is for the cliff to go down on child support? It's 140. So my attorney did good in that aspect with my amount of overnights. When you get down below 120, you're screwed. And if you look at the MPO report card, for child support, not, I'm not talking about parenting time, but just child support for the state of Michigan. I think it was a B. I'm not mistaken because they do base it not only on your income, but the amount of overnights. And you got other states that, you know, you got a D and an F because it was so lopsided. Um, you know, one thing about Michigan in closing, I would like to say, I got some exciting news when I was in CPAC in 2021 that uh, the Michigan, uh, hold on, I'm trying to, the state court administrative office or something like that for the state of Michigan passed a set of guidelines for family court. Now, when I say guidelines, that's just a recommendation. That's not law. But the guidelines stated that every case should start at 50-50 and work from there, which I totally agree with. You know, there's other mitigating circumstances, like we talked about moving three counties over, an abusive parent, um, alcohol and drug abuse, that type of thing. But those are only guidelines, they're not law. And basically what we were proposing in our bill coincides with what the guidelines what they recommended and getting back to saying that uh you know the, the younger female judges in Wayne County Michigan that they, they the trend is they've been following those guidelines and they've been very detailed on issuing an opinion of why they didn't think that was in the best interest of the kids and then one of our things was we want to written facts findings and conclusions on our bill so the judge cannot make a bench ruling. It's very hard to an appeal uh, to an appeal bench ruling, whereas the judge has to put it in the writing. It's a lot more uh, has a lot more uh, beef on it on an appellate court. You said in 2021 those guidelines was that Michigan uh, state guidelines that came out. When I was the CPAC in 2021, that's when I found out that um, there were the guidelines from the state of Michigan. I was in Florida when I when I caught wind of that. They give, give me some great talking points to our uh, federal uh, uh, representatives and uh, senators. I was able to share that with them as well. Yeah, that's great news. I mean, I, I think it's worthy to know that even if you don't get a shared parenting law passed in your state, there are other ways to sort of influence the court, and the guidelines are a fantastic way to do that. And uh, it's great to hear that now in Michigan that the uh, it sounds like some of the judges at least are following those guidelines. Well, I can only speak for the county that I'm in. You go up a couple of counties north of St. Clair County, you can forget it. But, um, and that was the whole idea for a bill. Right now, with the 83 counties in Michigan, there's 83 sets of laws that they can rule on. We want it consistent across the table. You know, in the state of Michigan, the uh, speed limit on the interstate is 70 miles an hour statewide, unless you're in an urban area. Um, why not have the same standards for child custody, the same across all 83 counties? And that just, you know, because what that does is that encourages, you know, you have attorneys that will tell a client, hey, go move to uh, Macomb County for 10 days and file there. You'll have a much favorable outcome. It should be the same for counties across the state. 
you shouldn't have to shout counties for a for a, a, a custody and a divorce dispute. Yeah, mm. I agree. I agree. It's uh, it certainly would make things a lot better. Um, you know, it's it's certainly a shame that you know a kid in one part of the state is an advantage over a kid in another part of the state. You know, to be able to see their both both their parents mm. and have a relationship with both parents. So, uh, certainly having a bill would would certainly help out there. Um, is there any uh, any final advice you have for the folks at home? No, um, I'm just going to throw my plug in here. Um, I am going to CPAC with uh, another organization, actually two organizations, uh, well, at least one, hopefully two, uh, Families Matter 2, and hopefully if we can get Margaret Ludwig involved, uh, American Street with Shared Parenting. Um, we are actively seeking funds. My trip is paid for. Um, we're trying to get AFBSP on board, you know, finances to get there. Um, if you go to our page on Facebook at Michigan for Shared Parenting, um, you know, sign up. There's a uh, GoFundMe link on there. And, uh, you know, every little bit helps. Um, you know, these, these trips aren't cheap. Um, we're fighting for you guys, but most importantly, we're fighting for the children. Well, John, thanks so much for coming today, and uh, we'll uh, get those links put in the notes here as well, so you can go to the Michigan for Sure Parenting uh, Facebook page, or you can visit them on the web, or you can uh, donate at their GoFundMe page uh, for travel expenses. Uh, John, thanks so much for coming on today, and I uh, really appreciate your time. Hey, thanks, Chris, for uh, you know for inviting me. Um, I enjoyed it. You know, I'm not the best to speak in front of a camera by all means. I could. Uh, probably have a better conversation sitting down watching the Michigan State Ohio State football game. But uh <clears throat> I I try to do the best I could do. And uh the main thing is mainly to dads and moms too, don't give up. Please do not give up. Your children need you.